A team from the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat is currently on the island to review the coordination and effective use of development resources and aid. This is a consultative process and the objective of the peer review is to guide improvements in development coordination including by informing discussions at the Pacific Islands Forum and post-forum dialogue. A six-strong team will be conducting a series of discussions with various sectors to gauge the effectiveness of aid funds in contributing to the reinforcement of country leadership and national prior priorities and the capacities of countries to use development resources. We are hoping to catch up with the team in our next news bulletin and we'll bring you more on this news story. Government's plans to demolish derelict houses has been delayed. A case presented by the Health Department to the Niue High Court last week for a demolition order to go about this planned move legally was rejected. The application from the Niue Health Department using a section in the Niue Public Health Act of 1965 that deems a building unfit for use or occupation was grounds for a demolition order to be granted. Following building ins inspections last year, 65 houses were identified and listed to be demolished. A list was presented to the Niue High Court last week. These abandoned houses have been described as an eyesore, a health hazard, but it seems that the judge was not convinced by the case brought before him last week as insufficient information was supplied to support the demolition order request. It appears that a small number of land or home owners have agreed to have their houses pulled down, but a majority of owners residing overseas are openly opposing this move. Some are requesting more time to decide and others are questioning government's motives. The department will now need to do more consultations with the concerned families and provide more evidence of ownership and proof of condition of the houses. The matter is ongoing and the department will have to gather more evidence before bringing the matter before the Niue High Court. Ms. Esther Gustava Pavihi has been appointed by Cabinet as a Commissioner to the Niue Public Service Commission. The decision was made during Cabinet's meeting last week. Ms. Pavihi started her official duties on the job today and is also filling in as the Acting Chairperson while the Chairman of the Commission is overseas for two weeks. Sources at the Falefono say that there is one more commissioner position yet to be filled as government take, makes a decision within the next few weeks and that Esther's appointment to the Public Service Commission also brings gender balance to government's main employing body. It is envisaged that Ms. Pavihi will take on board the challenging role to work together with the heads of departments and ministers to improve and drive better public services of the government of Niue. Niue is raising the bar in its tourism developments, making an appearance at the annual Bula Fiji trade show exhibition this month. The annual regional trade show was an ideal opportunity to target potential wholesalers and roll out new merchandise that has been in the planning for a few months now. This time round, the presence of personnel from the Niue Tourism Office has added a more personal approach in pitching Niue as a soft adventure and ecotourism paradise and the place to be, with good feedback so far and positive investments in the industry. Feedback uh, from the buyers was um, uh, that Niue appears to have changed. Um, we went from the last few years sort of having a couple of posters on the wall to this year having a, a really professionally um, kitted out booth, we had DVDs playing, um, uh, we looked we looked the part so you get taken seriously when um, we looked at it and you know it's safe to say I felt um, and I'm sure Vanessa will agree that um, in terms of uh, how we were represented that we probably outshone a number of our other Pacific Island neighbours uh, which um, put us in good light with the, with, with the buyers so um, you know the proof's always in the in the pudding, and, and now we've got the next few weeks of uh, follow up and um, making sure that uh, all of the things we agreed to in those meetings um, with uh, all of our buyers um, we actually achieve. 
Um, so that also that also mean a lot of work, a bit of work for a lot of the local operators um, in terms of um, making sure that um, they come through with um, uh, with the follow up as well, which will will help them with uh, obviously. But I think one of the biggest things was increasing our online presence in the online. Um, travel agents and it has taken a while to get Nui taken seriously um, in that space um, so a lot of them just didn't want to know about um, Nui prior. Um, we came away from the show um, really positive um, and had m- uh, virtually all of the major online providers commit that they will list Nui and then the next step is they list the operators um, um, you know the accommodation providers and some of the tours and bits and pieces like that so um, there's still uh, still a long way to go, but um, you know it's all long-term, um, uh, you know, positives. In terms of uh, attending this trade show, uh, how much have we actually invested in attending these types of trade shows, and are we getting our money's worth? Uh, well, the investment's actually relatively low. Um, uh, it's really uh, the cost of um, setting up the uh, the booth. Um, there's quite a bit of time involved back here, uh, and then obviously flights and some accommodation. Now, just to put it in perspective, just to get a return um, or just to break even on that, we actually only need um, really one new buyer um, to be supplying um, five or six uh, people to the island throughout a year, and the whole investment is, is paid off. Now, it's safe to say I'm pretty confident that we've done more than five or six people to to, um, to, to the island, um, uh, you know, probably a hundred times that um, one would one would hope. So in terms of return on investment, um, these are really important and uh, a good use of uh, good use of our um, funding um, as well, and something that has been uh, put into our plan to attend annually um, as well. New tourism remains positive that the island will benefit from economical gains of an expected increase in tourism numbers. Now what is yet to be identified is whether Niue is equipped to deliver what it is promising. Oh, certainly we're equipped to deal with it now. Um, obviously um, there, are, there have been a number of obstacles in terms of um, th- and things still to achieve in terms of the accommodation upgrades um, and the increase in that, which just puts us a step closer to um, realistically being able to get a, a second flight, um, the, uh, at least during peak periods. And that's, that's achievable, but we actually have to tick a few things off uh, first. Uh, and those, things are obvious, those activities are obviously underway, well underway um, now, but it's still a wee while to, uh, to go. But... Um, we certainly um, under-promise and over-deliver um, uh, in terms of what we have here now, um, I think, very comfortably. So, uh, And it was great. We bumped into quite a few uh, people who had been to Niue, loved it. Um, so uh, they spoke very highly. And I think it's safe to say, even if the, um, some of the buyers um, don't send any physical um, customers here, which is unlikely, which is you know unlikely that they won't after um, you know they sort of really bought into it. I think some of them will come themselves because <laughs> they really got excited about what we had on offer. And in line with keeping up with the competitive market, improving one's online presence seems to be a more cost-effective option. Tourism Development Coordinator Vanessa Marsh received training on website development and maintenance whilst overseas. Neo Tourism is confident that the new look and marketing strategies will benefit Niue in the long run as tourists bring more economical benefits to the island. An unexpected power cut to Alofi Central has left businesses at the commercial centre frustrated. The faults occurred just after 11 this morning and appears to have been confined to the commercial centre area reaching to the marketplace. Some businesses were forced to close up shop, meaning a loss of a day's income, which owners say is not good for business. Fortunately for Telecom and the Bank of South Pacific, their operations were not affected as they have backup generators, while other smaller businesses were not so fortunate. The smaller outlets in the commercial centre area 
had to take extra precautions to ensure frozen goods were well packed, hoping that power would be restored sooner rather than later. Liu Power says that the problem may have occurred due to an overload on the line and is a low voltage fault unrelated to a planned switch off that was done earlier in the morning that affected the Alofi South area. The New Power Corporation general manager, Speedo Hetutu, says that New Power staff were still working this afternoon to restore the power to the commercial centre area. Negotiations into the finalisation of the economic partnership agreements between NUE and the European Union was the main point of discussion last week. NUE is among 14 Pacific Island countries exploring options to trade with European countries. It has been seven years since talks began and this is the final stage to gauge whether there is a genuine interest from smaller island states to sign on to the EPA agreements. NUE's trade unit were busy facilitating one-on-one -on -one discussions between consultants from the Forum Secretariat and key trade stakeholders on the island. We spoke to one of the consultants last week about these discussions and negotiations. For NUE to uh, assess uh, what are some of the benefits and what would be some of the costs of uh, signing on to a trade agreement with the European Union. So basically this week we've been working with government uh, departments and also having um, interviews with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, private sector uh, and like I said with, uh, with the key stakeholders such as government uh, departments. So from what you've been able to gauge from the discussions and uh, your short time here on the island, uh, what is the trading potential that NUE has to offer the European Union? Uh, that's a very good question because as we know that there are a lot of constraints that NUE faces. It's uh, small, it lacks infrastructure, the population, market size, you name it. I mean, uh, it's in, in a unique uh, position because of, uh, of the circumstances that they are in. And what do they have to trade or what potential do they have to trade with the European Union? Well, my discussions so far said, uh, and I think it's common knowledge, it's probably very little to trade, but uh, there's uh, a potential uh, which is the fish. And the biggest potential uh, to trade with the European Union is the uh, is the new age fish. So this is something that we've been uh, having discussions with the fisheries people uh, in new Air. But that's sort of like a medium to long term uh, aspiration for new Air in terms of the IPA negotiations. But if there's anything that they could benefit out of the IPA, it could be fish. If uh, new Air decides uh, it, there is potential, it may sign up. But it doesn't really need to sign up today. Uh, but what is important for New Way is to participate in this discussion so that their interests are reflected in whatever final agreement that would be concluded. But like I said, New Way doesn't, if New Way thinks that it is not ready to sign uh, an agreement, then it doesn't have to sign. And if it thinks that maybe in the future it would be beneficial, then it can come in at a later stage to uh, sign the agreement. The benefits of such an agreement would mean an open door into the vast European markets for goods from the Pacific and also potential assistance from the European Union to implement or develop strategies to enable free trade. But in essence, it is for NUI to assess and decide for itself whether signing this agreement is in its best interest and the implications and obligations that come with it. And finally, today, Niwe joined in celebrations marking World No Tobacco Day that is commemorated on the 31st of May each year. This year's theme focuses on the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control that lays out guidelines and foundations for countries to implement and manage tobacco control. The Niwe Health Department has put forward their support for tobacco control that is also identified as a contributing factor into many non-communicable diseases. One of the biggest issues for health is um, the control of non-communicable disease, which is an international problem looming 
and the <coughs> things that cause non-communicable diseases are, is obviously alcohol use, tobacco use and unhealthy lifestyle and eating. So the tobacco um, preventing tobacco use is one of the pinnacles and a huge contribution in preventing non-communicable diseases here, which is heart disease, lung disease, etc., and all those other conditions that arise from tobacco use. Today we're really focusing on what we do in health and the way in which we promote and um, prevent smoking and how we get the message across. So for the purpose of what we're doing today, we're going to learn from each other. So each department or subdivisions has done um, a stall on how they think uh, they should promote and get the message out there to the public. And each department is going to be judged on their contribution. So we're learning from other people's ideas within the health department and what can be most effective for the public view. So we do, that's how we, the health department's celebrating it today. And then later, we're going to go out with some of the winning ideas to the public and present, present those uh, to the community. What are the current ongoing initiatives within the department that specifically targets tobacco control is a smoking cessation program that began in 2007, which has had positive results. In the last few years, we've invested quite heavily in smoking cessation um, equipment, so nicotine patches and gum, and uh, the public health team runs the program from here, and they've got a lot of people who come up regularly to pick up um, their gum or their patches, and they have counselling at the time, and that's proving very effective. We have seen that a lot of people are stopping, um, you know, and, and that, that's really a good sign. The Public Health Division continues to encourage smokers to give up the habit and will also be developing specially targeted programs before going out into the community. And those are our news stories that we have for you for this evening. We do hope you can join us again in our next news bulletin.